This is the bloody angle. Looking across the field towards the Union point of attack. And walk down the line. So the Confederates were behind an earth mound which was bigger at the time of the battle. It's about a metre high here. Also sort of covered with wooden barriers making it more difficult to attack. Field the Union troops had to attack across is quite undulating. Okay, there's a bloody angle in the distance. Again now in this position. The view across the valley is quite clear. So there's only about 50 metres of the lines where you couldn't see across the valley. This is the corner of um, what's known as the mule's shoe. So if you think of the horseshoe, sticking out into the uh, battlefield. This is the top right hand corner. The bloody angle was the left hand corner, which is uh, about 150 to 200 metres away from the camera. The Union troops attacked from the right, from tree line across there, and also from the tree line across there. Coming back to the salient, this was all Confederates in this side, and then this is the right hand length of the horseshoe with the trenches on the left leading off into the distance. This is the view from the Union side opposite the east angle. So again if the horseshoe was uh, in plan this is looking at the top right corner from the Union position with the bloody angle the top left of the horseshoe to the right. There's a barely visible uh, trench here. This was the Federal line, and this is where Upton started his uh, surprise attack. Going down the lane across the road there, breaking through the Confederate lines, but uh, due to being outnumbered and the losses, retreated again. This is a position about 100, 150 metres from the bloody angle. There's Confederate trenches in front. This is the position where Upton came out of the trees and broke through the line here. And eventually had to retreat uh, due to lack of support. And the fact that, uh, like the Confederates, he lost 1,000 men in the attack. So that's 1,000 dead, missing, or captured.